I uh, decided I was gonna actually uh, do a couple beers here tonight and thought I'd share them here on the channel. I'm actually gonna take a look at two different vintages of a Russian Imperial Stout from out of England. And this is gonna be uh, the Courage Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at the uh, 2012 as well as the 2013 version. And this is actually one that I have picked up previously on a beer run. They actually had uh, both of them together in one set. Picked up a couple of the sets just to uh, check it out. Uh, heard some good things about them from a few people. Right, two in this round too, right? So both are pretty much the same, except one was done a year before the other one. Interesting thing about these beers, these are actually set to last out to 13 years. So if you wanted to sell them, you can, or you could drink them fresh. So 10% ABV on both. Uh, they both indicate enjoy a rich espresso body with uh, pear overtones and an intriguing fresh smoky fruity finish. So it should be pretty interesting. Um, now I did have these before, but I didn't do a side by side with them. So I didn't remember anything different from them when I did them individually. So hopefully side by side, if there's anything that stands out, that'll pop out here. The brewery itself is Eagle Brewery based in Bedfordshire, England. And it used to be Charles Wells. So I guess they took over along those lines. And if you want to see what they kind of look like a little up close, that's their logo that you see in the bottles. Now, neither of these are really actually, uh, available unless you can find some of the old gift packs like i said here we still have them in some spots where they actually gave you those two and then you would get a glass with it as well so obviously because i got a couple of them i have two glasses here that i'm going to use and uh let's see how this one tastes big shout out to tunis welcome my friend yeah round two that that first one i was trying to i was initially trying to do some stuff with uh stream labs because right now i'm using stream elements here on obs and couldn't get it to go the way I wanted it to go. So I said, well, I'll switch back over to do it for right now. And then my mic wasn't set up right. So just cancel that one out and start all over. What's happening, Thomas? Cheers, my friend. Happy Sunday to you. And uh, Max, the Aints lost, right? Go Packers. Yeah, the uh, the Aints and the Patriots are out. So people are pretty happy about that. How you feeling tonight, myself? Yourself, my friend? So, uh... Steven said, I'm scared to try those black and voodoo I got from 1990, LOL. Well, <laughs> that is uh, definitely pushing some time there, of course. <laughs> Looking 20 years out. Uh, yeah, what's happening? Uh, dude, yeah, first like for sure, my man Dave. So hopefully you had a good time golfing today earlier. Hopefully you uh, had some great weather and made some great shots while you're out there. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pour the 2012 vintage here. Hopefully everybody else had a good Sunday as well. So it pours out with a nice little bit of thickness to it. Not fully that motor oil type feel, but it definitely has a little bit of a thickness there. So that's the 2012. And now these are smaller bottles. These are actually 9.3 ounces there that you can see so even smaller than the 11.2 but they say sometimes good things come just come in small packages had a finger of head now it's down to about a half finger right there big shout out to pa brew news paul what's going on my friend cheers to you as well another great beer channel up there in pennsylvania doing this thing richie z cheers my friend and yeah here's to a new week for sure hey what's happening coach actually you can't join on here i'm actually doing this through obs so it's not like a stream yard where you can actually join onto the chat uh great brew did a side by side with two other oh nice so you've already done this one awesome and you did it with two other russians and uh magnus what's up cheers happy sunday to you everybody's getting ready for the work week tomorrow i assume so not looking forward to getting back into that <laughs> you got that going for you, Max, huh? <sighs> but you get a nice aroma coming off of it. I am picking up some chocolate notes there on the nose. You definitely get a good amount of sweetness. It's got that little bit of a sweet candy type appeal to it. A little bit of a toffee type feel in the aroma. 
nice feel of the texture definitely get a little bit of a fuller type feel that chocolate feel comes through very nicely feels good in the mouth feels good in the lips good malty feel being picked up with this one here and then pa says cheers to richie and john what's going on cheers my friend monday is your thursday <laughs> so you're headed towards the end of the week when everybody's headed to the beginning nice <laughs> I hear you too. This. <laughs> but it's got a nice feel on it. That texture has that little bit of that syrupy type feel that I get on some of the bigger stouts, but the duration stays around nicely. You're picking up the great tones of the malts here. A little bit of a coffee feel coming in now on the back end. But very much what you would expect to get on a Russian Imperial Stout. Obviously with these, you want to try to drink them at least 50 to 55. If you listen to PA Brew News, you might tell you to drink them at 90. But usually 50 to 55, you don't want to drink them as ice cold because you lose some of that flavor and the aroma. So I let this one sit for a bit before cracking it open. little bit of a chewiness in there that I get as well yeah but Paul you think everything's a bit thin too <laughs> it's not as thin as some of the other ones I've actually had that's for sure definitely has a little bit more thickness there so overall it's nice you do get a little bit of a that chocolate and almost a little bit of a fudgy type of peel as well with it uh, as Paul says, 155 degrees at least. Uh, Richie, a lot of whiskey channels had December Advent thing going on with their beer. Well, yeah, a lot of the guys had beer Advent calendars. They were also doing, I didn't do one. I've actually never done one on the channel, but there were a few people where each day they would open up a new beer heading into Christmas. So I think the beer Advents have been around before some of the whiskey ones even because it's been common over the years. And now you see the whiskey guys doing it as well. So good interesting concept and a great way to try different beers so now i'm going to take a look here at the 2013 and if you're wondering both of these are also dated on the bottles which you do have to check your dates to make sure you're not getting something stale out there at times and both of them are dated out 13 years so one was out to 2025 the other one was out to uh 2026 now in the 2013 Gave me a little bit more head on this pour, as you can see there, which both has that nice tan color. Uh, pretty much, well, not fully jet black on the bottom. You have a little bit of a tint coming through. Yeah, that's a point that is not as bold on the dark fruits as much. Although I will say with this one, the 2013, I am getting a little bit more of a dark fruit appeal than a 2012. The uh, 2012 almost seemed to be a little aromatic. The more aromatic though, coming out with the uh, the chocolate appeal. This one has more of the dark fruit appeal. I get a little bit of a note of what I would consider black licorice on this one. Uh, by the way, I have to say at least once, go Badgers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hey, what's happening, Erie? Cheers. But I don't get the uh, the coffee as much out of this. It's more, like I said, that black licorice aroma as far as taste. Taste-wise, this one does have more of the dark fruit in the taste as well. So it is more of a little bit of a dark fruit. The 2013 is also a little bit thinner than the 2012. I do feel a little bit more of a thinness there. The coffee doesn't come through as much. The chocolate appeal isn't there as much. Still a nice beer, but I would have liked to have more of the tones for the 2012 kick in to really give it that Russian Imperial Stout feel. almost seems to be 
a little more muted on that. Check the other one. Yeah, 2012 has a little bit higher of a a kick that comes through. A little bit more of a sweetness on the 2012. Again, going back to that toffee, you're not getting it that much in the 2013. Interesting. Slightly a little more bitter on the 2013 than the 2012. But a slightly different experience. Both actually have a nice feel to them. If I had to pick one between the two, I'd be more apt with the 2012 than the 2013. But I could drink either one. And I will drink either one. But that one is definitely a little bit more thinner, even though they're both at the 10% uh, ABV. Uh, Paul said, did get a hint of soy sauce from the Harvey's, but not from the Courage as much. Yeah, I'm not picking up any like the soy sauce uh, type feel with this one. But it's just really just that little bit more of that black licorice, really. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Mine was 20 years, was 2014, you believe. Do they make a spicy beer? Asking for some friends at all. Yeah, actually, there are some beers that are spicy. There's some that are done with various peppers. There's some done with other type spices in them. So you can get some spicy beers. Leave a little bit of a heat there for you. Does the licorice note bother you? I don't mind it. No, it doesn't really bother me. I kind of come to expect it. And when I drink bigger beers like the barley wines and some of the uh, strong ales, sometimes they'll have that licorice note come through. And it's become something kind of expected with those styles. However, it's funny. If you gave me a piece of black licorice, I would not want it because I don't like it as a black licorice as a candy. I guess it's almost like when you're a kid, you don't like maybe tomatoes, but you can eat ketchup on stuff. So in its raw form or... Liquor's form, not a fan, but in beers, I've actually come along to uh, to like it pretty much or enjoy it with the beer as kind of being expected there. I do like some of the sweeter beers more. That's why I'm really digging the aroma in the 2012. And both of these were taken out at the same time, sat the same amount of time. But on the nose, definitely 2012, more aromatic. You got to almost sniff a little hard to get the 2013 notes out. Yeah, that definitely, that thinness is there a little bit. So kind of interesting, um, but a neat, a neat thing. And this is the fun stuff you have when you compare two beers, right? The 2012 and the 2013. Same brewery, but just different years have different outcomes. And it's kind of fun to always do those kind of comparisons when you can with beers. Um, hey, what is happening, Ant? Cheers. Nice to connect with you on the other stream and looking forward to your videos and stuff, too. Thanks for definitely popping in here. And 703. Um, the Old Stock Ale. I have not had the Old Stock Ale um, as of yet. So I hope to actually have that here at a point two um, to actually uh, take a look at that. I don't know why I've never gotten that from North Coast because I do like North Coast beers, but just never had uh, picked it up. I guess because there's just so many beers out there. Um, I do love, the, of course, their uh, Rasputin, which is a great stout, but um, that is definitely something I will look for. And we got our big beer fest coming up here in uh, March, which will have like 500 plus beers and we get some crazy stuff in there and i think last time we did have um north coast in as well for that one so maybe they'll have old stock there uh marzins uh they're on the sweet side with low carbonation yeah i i like some of the marzins as we get into oktoberfest obviously that's what you're looking at when you're talking about oktoberfest beer and we have the biggest oktoberfest outside of munich here in cincinnati each year so it's kind of cool because they come over with some of the German breweries, so you really get some nice Oktoberfest beers that you don't usually get here. So a lot of times when they come over, I'm not drinking like Sam Adams or some of the other ones. I'm drinking the ones coming from Weissenfan and some of the other breweries 
um, when they come across the uh, the pond, so to speak. But yeah, I do like I like some margins. There's some loggers. I'm definitely more of an ale person than a lager person, but there are some lager styles I do enjoy. Um, I do enjoy like some of the short spears. I enjoy like the box. Um, and then Marzins, I can actually drink some of those nicely. You know, on a hot day, I mean, a nice Pilsner also works. So most of the times I'm drinking more ales, but I definitely have room for lagers as well. Oh, hell yeah. Good German smoked Marzin is where it's at. Oxen Claire all day. I can never say them, but yes. If you never had the X on Clara, which is the green bottle, I definitely recommend it, especially if you liked a smoked beer, um, the smoked Mars, and like Paul mentioned, it's one of my favorites, and I need to actually get more of it. I did a review on it a couple years ago, but so solid, and they have some other styles. I need to pick them up and give them a try, too. Uh... Rob, what was a couple of brews that had the most memorable noses for you? I am all about a great nose on brewing spirits. Um, depending on, I guess, what you're actually looking at for the aroma, because there's some, if you like, for instance, like fruitiness, you'll get some things off of some of the sour type beers and some of the fruitier type IPAs nowadays. If you like some of the, the chocolate and the caramel notes, you'll get some stuff off of those um, as well. But trying to think offhand some of the ones like the bourbon county series they have a lot of good noses on their beers um you look at some of the evil twin beers they have some pretty good stuff that they come out with if you can get some of the mckeller beers um, which is basically the twin of evil twin um that they have some nice noses uh, i'm thinking of some of the bigger type beers that you can actually try um but all of them if they're a solid made one, you know, I mentioned the uh, Rasputin, you know, you take it out, you don't drink it ice cold, you drink it like at least at 50, 55, that'll open up nicely in the nose there. You also have Sierra Nevada in their Narwhal, which is a nice one. So there's some different ones out there. Um, the Urbach is where it's at. Ooh, that's one to keep in mind of. Oh, the green is the Oak Smoke Doppelbach. Oh, okay. All right. I thought that was the... Uh, Action Claire, though. I guess you're just... Was that just the name of the label? They've got a few different ones. I just need to get more of their beers. Yeah, that is a double box. You're right there. Yeah. Well, now I know to look for the other ones. They got a nice Rouse beer, it looks like. Um... Krausen. They got a the Hellas. They got a nice little line of beers. Ah, I love all the aromas. That's the name of the beer line. Okay. Yeah, I just pulled it up on Untapped, and I was just thinking of that with the green one, but um. Yeah, I mean, the one thing, Richie, with the aromas is basically that's your first part of the taste factor, right? So how, how the smell hits you actually gets your taste going as well. So a beer that smells great can really impact your experience when you're actually tasting the beer. J.W. Lee's Age Harvest Ales have great noses. So I haven't seen that. I haven't seen those ones. Hellas, Weiss, Marzen. Urbach, Doublebach, and Krausen. Yeah, that's all the ones I just saw listed there for those guys. You know, one of my favorite porters, the Imperial Porter, is the uh, the Victory at Sea from Ballast Point. And some of their uh, var varieties are very nice. Although, I found out they had one that was Oreo Victory at Sea, and I would love to be able to check that one out. Star Anise is nice as a hint in the bruise. All right. Yeah, I've heard of Star Anise too. Spicy beer Friday night throwdown challenge has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? I missed that one there, Tunis. Yeah, it can have a nice ring. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think the last time I had a spicy beer. Maybe I've been a bit. I had one beer that was done with Serrano peppers and. The spices did kick in on that one, and uh, definitely a little bit more heat than probably 
was expecting, but, uh, you know, did finish it. And then they have the one from Sculpin, that's a habanero Sculpin, and that one has a little bit of heat behind it. Uh, they have a case of their Westerfield Victory SC at a, at a local shop of mine. West of Five Victory SC is pretty good, too. I did like that one. I'm thinking with the Oreo one, you actually have to be there at a ballast point. Although, maybe they'll have it in Chicago now since they're king and convict or whatever. Still don't get that deal, but they bought Ballast Point. Which I guess now Ballast Point is technically a uh, craft brewery again. Star Anise is the same as Black Liquors. Ah, I thought you was I thought Star Anise you were saying they were brewery or something. Okay, I've never heard Star Anise in. What a difference a year makes between these two, though. This one also has, the 2012 has more of a creamier type base and feel to it. I mean, it really slides down the throat nicely. Versus 2013. It still goes down, but not as much of that creaminess. Two good beers for a nightcap, though. That's for sure. So anybody else drinking anything out there tonight? I don't know, if Paul, if you're at work or if you're at home. Because you're usually working around this time still. Right, this is probably the best time to enjoy beer. Endless amount to try. Most are very good. I agree. It's, uh... <laughs> I like at Paul with the cootie. Um... Yeah, it's definitely a good time to be a beer drinker, for sure. We are in a good era that you're trying all kinds of things. So Paul has asked me to uh, what we call the cuvee, which is actually to put the both together. So let me see. That's, uh, that's about the same enough. So now I'm going to put the 2013 into the 2012 to see how they all they mesh. That's not bad. I mean, it kind of brings down a little bit of that black hookers tone. And it gives it more of that, again, creamy feel to the base. So it makes it more like the 2012 than the 2013 by putting them together. Yeah, the habanero scope and one is enough. Yeah, it, it, it heats you up there. I, I don't see people that want to maybe finish a six pack of those. Uh, two goods will make a great. I like that th thought process. Yeah, you're at work right now. <laughs> yeah. And so you get a little bit of a, with them together, a little bit of a chewiness in the cheeks that I'm having. A little bit of a light, that leathery appeal that people talk about. But with the mixing together from the 2013, I do get a little bit more of a thinner balance in there as well. So you can definitely feel that in play. Having a Soul Mexican beer is so mellow, but I enjoy a tall can a few times a year. Yeah. And you know, the Soul, I'm going to actually, and I haven't picked it up yet. I told some people I would, but a few weeks back, I did one of the chiladas and the Soul chiladas here at our uh, local Kroger. So I'm going to probably do that at some point. I actually liked the chalada more than I thought I would, having that little bit of tomato juice in there, but it actually wasn't, I kind of went in thinking it wasn't going to be that great, and it was decent enough, I mean, to have like, maybe like as a brunch type drink or something, if I'm having something like that in a meal, instead of a Bloody Mary, having a chalada, I could definitely do that. Also having Maker's Mark RC6 bourbon with the soul, well there you go. Nothing wrong with that at all. I haven't had Makers in a while either. You would think with me being in Kentucky, I'd have more bourbon than I usually do, but I'm just more of a beer guy for the most part. Although I was drinking that gin last night, the bourbon barrel gin, and that was good. I've only got a little bit left in the bottle, so I may finish it out later this week, but uh, I do like a nice gin at times.
But at this point, you can see the head is actually already dissolved out. Both of them have enough of a smoothness, you could put them down rather easily too. So maybe that's, you know, it's a 10% ABV, 9.3 ounce bottle. Goes down without any problem. I think that's the smallest kind of size I've seen for a beer bottle. Usually from overseas, you're used to it being the 11.2 ounce, but this is the first time I saw like the 9.3 ounce, so not sure what that's all about. But also, big shout out to all the new the new subscribers that came on board today, uh, Terry and Circles, Jerry Sullivan, uh, Julie Collins, It's a SEMO Thing, Jackson RC Aviation, JC, uh, Jim's Landscape LLC number one, Drone Effects with Claude, Cheryl Freeman, Jericho Rio, uh, Master Plove, Chris sample emily crochet channel all you guys appreciate all you guys jumping on today uh famous nine lives rapper south dance mama j t lou canada james guype capelli william newell gonna be definitely checking all you guys out here uh is it midget four ftn tn Nani's world. I don't know what the abbreviations were though, but welcome Sharon Allen, Jenny's Creations, Jade Alexander. A lot of people jumping on board. Robert Butler. So that's what it's all about. Growing the channel. Make sure you check out all the people here. Check out the people in the chat. Check out Richie Z. Check out PA Brew News. Some great channels here. Check out. You know, Steven Tunis, check out everybody here. Everybody here is doing some good stuff. Miscellaneous Magnets. Um, if you got a channel, let people know in the chat as well to check you out there. Um, along those lines, Tunis, good guy. I actually met him through my buddy Flo now, uh, Flo Rider Hillbilly down in Florida. Uh, one of my Mountaineer companions here online, Max Fake. Check him out. Check out everybody in the chat. It's uh, People forget sometimes that YouTube is a nice social thing it's not just about putting stuff out there and waiting for people to watch your stuff you got to be involved so so great people here see what they're doing in their channels if you like what they have hit that subscribe button so you can see more of their stuff best bourbon not beer bourbon lol <laughs> yeah i got you <laughs> Yeah, we actually have a bourbon, beer, and bacon festival each year here, which is pretty awesome. So the three Bs, bourbon, bacon, and beer. And uh, they do a nice little setup. It's like down on the river here in Northern Kentucky. We're across from Cincinnati. And uh, last time I went there, enjoyed some good things. The craziest thing, though, is they were making these sandwiches that were basically glazed donuts on each end is the buns and inside of it was bacon and something else like a bacon burger or something freaking delicious didn't want a whole one though i had to split it with a couple people because it's like you just knew the calories on that thing were your arteries are waiting to clog up if you ate that whole thing so but uh damn sure delicious why does everything that tastes good end up being so bad for your body that's just not fair if something doesn't taste good it's probably healthy for you but you don't want to keep eating that But thanks for everybody that tuned in. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter one as I am actually going to uh, get prepared for bed here. You got to get up and work in the morning. But uh, thanks for everybody that swung by. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your little look there at the two beers that I did. And look forward to catching up with you guys soon. Probably be back on tomorrow with another live stream. 
and with some more detail stuff and then uh gonna have some more streams coming up with some of the beer news type things and of course every thursday night we do the beer flow show if you're new to the channel 9 15 eastern and i'm usually joined by todd and eric for that and uh, hopefully we'll get joe back here at some point as well but that's always a good thing uh what's your favorite beer to pair with your favorite pizza i usually go lighter so i can taste the pizza uh you know with pizza you can almost switch it up for different beers but depending on what the pizza is if it's pizza, that might be like your regular, you know, pepperoni, mushroom type thing. I like having an IPA with it. More your uh, traditional type IPA, right? Not like talking about one of the fruitier type IPAs, but one of your traditional classic IPAs or even just a pale ale goes well with pizza along those lines. If it's something where it might be some type of funky type pizza, you know, you may throw something else in there for a twist. It's like, for instance... Um, if you got something and it might have, you know, pineapple in there, you might have something that might be like maybe a fruitier type IPA to, that might bounce well with that pineapple flavor. So, you know, it always depends on how you're mixing that up there. But an IPA, I find, is always pretty good with the pizza along those lines. Or you can also have like just a classic Pilsner does well with pizza. That nice, crisp, refreshing feel, a light beer works nicely with the uh, pizza. If you're having something like a salad, a Hefeweizen is always a good thing, too. Something light along those lines. So, you know, you try to match up the taste per taste and see what compares best. But uh, if your palate likes it, then just do it. Always follow your palate. <laughs> With that being said, cheers to you, Erie. You have a great night as well. I know um, they got the other thing going there as well, so I appreciate you coming in for a few minutes here and saying hi and, and uh, hanging out. And then, uh, Richie, cheers to you as well. Always appreciate you, Richie. You're here, like, a lot most of the time now, so always appreciate you cutting some time to join on the live stream. And... Uh, that being said, hopefully everybody gets off to a great start tomorrow on Monday. And uh, if there's things you want to see on the Beer Channel, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'm always looking for new ideas. I've had a few of the guys express to me they want to see me do more of the hop videos. So I'm going to do some more hop videos. Uh, some more of the beer news type stuff has been expressed. Some more like the, uh, the differences between the different beer styles. So all those kind of things are in the works. But if there's something you have questions on, always feel like leaving a comment. And I'll try to make a video or do something with it. Or we'll do a live stream and chat about it as well. Night to you, David, as well. And to everybody else, thanks for watching. Look forward to catching up with you guys soon. Keep drinking those good craft beers. And remember, there's always time. Get your beer on. Cheers, everybody. Hey.